share with y'all a little bit about, about us and, and about the day-to-day, -day, the basic football, football one-on-one -on -one maybe, um, kind of take you from a ground floor level and build you up. Uh, we're actually going to talk offense and defense in here. I'm, I'm heavily involved on both sides of the ball, so you'll see, you'll see a lot of that. Uh, we'll probably go about 30, 35, 40 minutes here, and if you got questions, uh, we'll go. This is going to look treated just like a coaching clinic. And so uh, we may get you up here and give some examples and let you align. I, I may give a test at the end, uh, see what you know, see what you pick up. So here we go. Football in its natural state. It's really big to us right now. Uh, the way we, we, we've uh, kind of came in here and, you know, what is football in its natural state? It, it's, there's a lot of things that it, it, it implies. Um, it really starts with, you know, a young man started playing football at a very young age. Why? Because it was fun. And, uh, and so we're making sure, and obviously we understand you know, the fun's in the winning. We get that. We understand that. But fun's also in the journey of building something, too, and start from a ground floor and building a young man. It's one thing to recruit. It's another thing to develop. And so we take great pride in how we develop our players, and this is part of it. So that's some of the football in its natural state. So here we go. Just basic terminology, teaching uh, teaching you, teaching our, our, our recruits, our players, uh, the first thing we start with, it, it's, it's kind of like John Wooden said at one time uh, when he first uh, was, was teaching, the first thing he had to teach a young man to do was tie his shoes. Why? Because he couldn't get down the floor or put a, how to put his socks on and, and lace his shoes up because if he tripped over his, his shoestrings, then, then there's no way a guy can get down the floor and make a layup. So we started from the basics, of, of, and this is every position group. Uh, that we start with. What does the field look like? So when we talk in terms of coaching, what does that mean? When I talk above, you know, plus, uh, plus above the hash, minus below the hash, on the numbers, the max line, what does that mean? That's just, that's just verbiage. So explaining, you know, a young man, a lot of these players that we get in here, they don't understand how far it is from the sidelines to the bottom of the numbers. And then when you take a, a young man and you, you, you go and maybe you're going to a bowl game and you go and you play um, on an NFL field to where the, 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 the numbers are already painted out there and the difference of where the NFL numbers are from where college numbers are. And that's why you see some different lines on those NFL fields. Um, and so, you know, what is that? So we just start, you know, basic how wide is a football field? We know it's 53 and a third. I think everybody in here knows that. Uh, but I bet you didn't know the, diff the from the top of the numbers, and this is what we consider the top of the numbers, right here. So if I go tell you, true story, if I go tell you to stand at the top of the numbers, that's your alignment as a wide receiver, we literally had a young man that went and stood on top of the numbers. He literally stood right here. In fact, he goes to still. He told me to stand on top of the numbers. And he's exactly right. So we did a really poor job of explaining what we mean by the top of the numbers. The top of the numbers, and a lot of you'll see our receivers in, in, in some hash splits, or some uh, on our splits, they'll be aligned at the top of that number. It's not just because that's where we wanted to align, that's because that's, the, according to that play, how we want his, his adjustment, his release, and it allows him uh, an opportunity to get inside, outside release. Some of our receivers will line up below the numbers. Hey, on this play, you're below the numbers. That means you're at the bottom of that number. Okay? So if I say, hey, we're lining up minus one below the numbers, then he knows immediately that I am minus one yard below the bottom of that number. Hey, I need you plus two above the numbers. What does that mean? That means i got to be at the top of the numbers and line up plus two toward the ball. Oh, so we know that the hash marks, the hash and the numbers are very similar in how we communicate with our players. You'll see a lot of our five men, you'll talk, we'll talk that in just a few minutes. Uh, our nickel sounds, you, you'll see some of that and some of the way we pressure. We'll tell those guys, hey, I need, you to, I need you to align plus one off the hash. Well, what does that mean? I need you plus two off the hash. I need you minus two off that hash. So that, just like that's what we communicate with these young men. They know... Much like the numbers, if I tell you to line up minus one off that hash, you know you're inside that hash one yard. Or if I need you minus four, then you're minus four yards. If I say plus off that hash, that means you're outside the numbers, or outside that hash. So plusing and minusing is a lot of our day-to-day -day talk with these young men. The top, from top of number to top of number is 35 and a third yards from the top to top. Really, as we go through that, you know, we don't have a whole lot of dealings with that. 
uh, outside that we want our young men to understand that that's, that's the width of this football field uh, from inside those top of those numbers. Now, the, the big thing, and I mentioned it a second ago, you know, from the bottom of the numbers to the sidelines is seven yards in college. In NFL, it's different. It's wider. It, it moves out. So, you know, you go out and, we, again, we, we, we've played on NFL fields, and you, you literally go out and you have to, so much of what we do is you can hear me talk about the numbers. You have to find where that bash mark is. If it's a turf field, they'll have a, 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 like a little representation of what a number looks like, but it's just two lines. And that's where the kid has to understand of, of how he aligns according to where the numbers are on a college field compared to an NFL field. Um, you've got players that get into the league and they, 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 they're not necessarily struggle with it. They've got to learn that all over again. Uh, from the bot, from the out-of-bounds line to the top of the numbers is nine yards. It's very important to understand that because so much of what we do, if we'll tell, hey, our alignment on this play is at the top of the numbers. Your job is to, as you, as you release, you're, and this is the way we'll say it, as you release, if your alignment's on top of the numbers, we need you to release to the bottom of the numbers, and on the seventh step, you would make your break on a skinny. Uh, so what does that mean? It means my alignment would be here. As I release, I'm releasing to the bottom of the numbers, so I'm trying to gain width that way. Uh, seems simple, um, but that's the way we talk. We talk to our players, and, and if you don't understand... Uh, the alignments, uh, usually alignments dictate a lot. Um, you know, when you look at defense, when we talk to our defensive players, it's all about alignment, assignment, and technique. Well, the alignment is critical. How are those receivers aligned? Are they aligned wide? Do you see a receiver? And you'll see if you come out to our practice field, everybody's asking me, what does that red line mean? There's red lines that are painted on our practice fields. That's called a max line. All right, a max line is, is any vertical ball that we want to throw, we do not want our receivers pushed outside that max line. That max line from the sidelines to the max line is right around five yards. Okay, right around five yards. We want him to hold that max line. A corner is going to try to force him outside that max line. Anybody know why? You're getting wider. It forces the quarterback to make a perfect throw. As opposed to if you can have a wide receiver hold his max line, he's got a DB, come here, Will. He's got a DB that's leaning on him. He's got to lean back on him. So if, if I'm a wide, if, if Will's this DB and I'm releasing on a vertical, he's going to try to wash me past the max line. I've got to lean and hold my ground. And I, we tell the quarterbacks, drop the ball outside the max line. Why? That allows me five yards to make my move here to catch that ball. So many guys get pinned right here on the sidelines and they have to make a perfect throw. And uh, so that's what you'll see when you come to our practice field. You'll see red line on the outside. That's called a max line for us. Um, let's see. Anything else, Will, that I missed on that? Uh, same thing, goal line. Everybody knows the goal line. We call the back line or the end line is the, 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 the back uh, end zone line. Uh, so much about what we do, we got several plays, especially when we get down in that red zone. We really want to work a two yard buffer on the back end line. Um, and so, uh, you know, we would never want to hug or crowd that at back end line. We want to hold that two yard buffer for the same reason we wouldn't want to hold a max line here. Same way with our, our DBs. Alignment, assignment, technique. What's the alignment of that receiver? Well, that receiver's aligned wide. His, he's aligned at the max line, Coach. Well, if you're, if you're a DB coach, Coach Chavis and uh, Coach Caldwell, Coach Smith, and those guys see a wide receiver aligned wide, they're telling that corner right now there's really only one route that guy can hurt you with. He's, he's, he's widened his splits for one reason, and that one reason is he's trying to get inside leverage of you. So take away your alignment needs to be inside leverage of that wide receiver. The wider he goes, the tighter we want to get. We don't want to get as wide as him. If we if we let they if we split the wide receiver all the way out here and we brought a corner way out, we got a lot of a lot of grass in here to work with. You'll hear our coaches talk, you know, hey man, you know, where, where's the grass? Where's the open field? Um, so that's that's the first thing we talk. We talk this with freshmen. Uh, heck, when I was coaching high school ball, and I mean we would talk this with our seventh graders. It's every year. Um, these are things that you, you think are just
just like the young man that stood on top of the numbers. The things you think they know, but they don't know. And uh, so this this alone in itself is is big for both offense and defense and understanding these these rules. Okay, go ahead. Now let's talk defense a little bit. When we talk defensive techniques, this always intrigues me. Um, but there's there's a uh, uh, because some kids again come in here and they don't understand what a an uh, over front is, an under front, an odd front, uh, they have no clue. Um, and we say, well, it's odd. Well, give me some numbers that are odd. Well, one, three, five, okay, great. You understand you're in an odd front if you're playing, and that number of down linemen is considered an odd front. But, but what technique do each one of these young men play? And we'll talk positions here in a few minutes. But when you see a D lineman aligned in a certain area, we don't refer to him, hey, go line up as a nose guard. No. We, we don't say, hey, go, go line up over the guard. No. That's not, that's not the way it's used. There's techniques that are used. We say, hey, line up in a zero technique. Well, a zero technique is just head up or shoe to shoe with the center. That's a true nose. You know, we were, back in the day, they would say, that's an old nose guard there. Well, it's a zero technique. Yes, he is a nose, but he's a, a, a zero. That means he's head up right over the top. If we see a guy shaded that center, we'll call him a one technique. Okay? He's still a nose, and when you start riding up, you know, the end, the tackle, the nose, the end, he's still that nose, but he's in a shaded technique. He's not head up on it. He's shaded. Some people you see tilt their nose. They'll drop him and tilt him in a shade. If you're in a considered a two eye, we see a lot of two eyes. A two eye is, is nothing more than inside eye of that guard, of the offensive guard. We all know guard, if you're on the offensive side of the ball, center, guard, tackle, obviously your ends. Uh, but a two eye, he's a line on the inside of either the guard of, 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 the, of the eye technique. Uh, we'll keep him inside. His responsibility essentially is to keep the inside arm free. He's responsible for the A gap. Everything you talk about in defense, there's gaps. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll hear people talk. You, you may hand a, uh, you see something that happens on a Saturday or a Friday night, you hand a power off and it just splits. And, and we call it, it spits. It spits out and it goes. And uh, when that happens, when it, when it splits it and it gets out, then somebody was gap, not gap sound. So you might have had a gap and you got washed or you, you, you didn't maintain your gap integrity. Um, so a gap. It's also known as a G alignment. So you'll see some, and, and you get really technique with some of this, you'll see a, a, an over G front, an under G front. That means that that, that guy is in a two eye technique. Because um, it could very well be in a shade and still be called the same thing. But if we say, if we attach G to it, it means that shade or that nose is a little bit wider. A two technique is nothing more than head up. It's just, it's, it's shoe to shoe. Uh, again, most of these guys, uh, they can play either the A or B gap. That, that's a little difficult when you start talking offensive football. Because when we know if we get a two I, he's an A gap player. But if you get a head up guy, then that those defense guy, they've got the capability of going B gap or A gap on you. A three technique is, as you see over here, um, is an outside shade. Again, his job is to keep his outside arm free. He's a B-gap player. Now, he didn't have to always be because they could stunt. They could what they call long stick. They could bring him across. Um, but but for, the, you know, for the most part, if he's aligned in that technique and there's no movement, that's exactly what he's going to be responsible for is the B-gap. A 4-I. 4-I is the same thing like a 2-I, but the only thing is, is it is, it is um, off, the, off the tackle. It's inside shade of the tackle. He's a B-gap player. Uh, you'll see a lot of this. Four technique, it's head up, shoe to shoe. Five technique is just a little wider. And six technique, now we start talking about the tight ends. How do those defensive ends align to a tight end? All right, well, they, and if you're in a six technique, if we're up there talking, hey, what, what do they do in tray formation? What do they do in ace formation? How do they play their ends versus tray? Trey is a tight end in two for us. You'll see a little bit of that in just a few minutes. Well, well, Coach, he's in a, he's in a head up, or he's in a six technique. 
That means he's just he's to, he's shoe to shoe with him. A six technique, a four technique, and a two technique are the same things, but over the different positions. That makes sense. So the two's over the guard. Okay, the four's over the tackle. The six is over the tight end. Seven technique. The seven technique is inside eye of that tackle. I'm sorry, of that of that tight end. Uh, again, he's a C gap player at that point. You got your gaps. You see your gaps there, A, B, and C. Um, some are defensively, we'll call it X, Y, and Z to the left, A, B, and C to the right. Um, some people go A, B, C to the right, A, B, C to the left. I mean, it, it, so it's just really how you communicate. Um, defensively is, is, you know, we'll talk X, Y, and Z. Seven technique is inside. Seven technique is similar to a two eye and a four eye over their respective positions. Eight technique is is a really it's it's a it's a wide wider than a tight end. So you'll see these these defensive ends they'll line up wide and, and that's that's an eight technique. Usually most of the time on those guys um, he will he'll have contain or he'll be heavy coming off the edge. There'll be some type of pressure coming with a with a wide technique right there. A nine technique. Uh, outside eye of the tight end, he's just a little tighter to that tight end, but he's still outside eye to him, and he keeps his arm free. So, as, again, a lot of our players, you, you just think if you're an offensive lineman, you have to communicate. You have to communicate daily in your room with your offensive line coach. If you're a defensive lineman, you have to communicate with your D-line coach and what technique you're in. Every call represents a different alignment for you. So if you had, well, I line up outside eye of – the guard. Well, no, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear that you're in a three technique. and Because we'll say, okay, well, you're going to line up in a three and you're going to stem to a two eye. On go, you're stemming. You'll see these guys line up and you'll see go, and those guys stem real quick before the ball is, is snapped. So you got to be able to communicate that. You have to be able to understand those things. Um, it's really big in, in just the verbiage and how you can walk into a, a, a room and, and not be like, you know, some, some Heck, some people walk into algebra, and they, if, you, if you miss the first two or three days of algebra, the week two is pretty tough on you because all the stuff you talk about week one, week two is uh, you, you're using that. If you didn't get it week one, you're in trouble. It's the same way here. You have to get this stuff early, and that's why we part of our summer meetings that are going on right now is going back to basics, teaching young men how how we 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 call things, what basic pressures look like. Um, so that's what's going on right now. Next. Now, so as you look at this, let's talk about this. Now you're going to hear a, 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 an over front, an under front. <clears throat> an over and under front, just, just basic call here, is uh, off of a four down. It's a four down. And, and really we talk under front is nothing more than we look at when we, de when we declare the strength of a formation, now let's talk about that too. What is the strength of a formation? We, defensives call their strength according to A, where the tight end aligns, or where the back aligns. If they're in, if they're in a balanced formation, a two-by-two two formation, where is the back aligned? <clears throat> if all things are similar, most people call the strength of a formation to the field. Okay. And so in this case here, um, the tight end is now set to the boundary. So we would call this one of two ways. If we were talking offensive football in here, I would tell you because of we don't care about this, we only care about how they align, we would call our strengths to the field, okay, from an offensive standpoint. So we would say this is an under front. That means he is in a, anybody know what technique that is? Three. He would be in a eight, a wide eight. That's right. He is in a two eye or a shade. If he was tighter to that center, we would call it that one technique or a really tight shade. He is in a five. Yeah, a five at that point. Okay. He's in a five technique, and and we would say, and uh, so our our communication. If we were sitting here game planning, we'd say, okay, if he's in a five technique. Well, then a five technique here, and also a five technique is here. Absolutely. So we would say, all right, Will, we want to under, we want to know as they break these things down. Will is are they in a wide five, or is he in a tight five? A lot of that, that you know, everybody's trying to find where's the bubble at. Where, let's run to the bubble. So that's considered an under. An under front is 
we call the formation or the, the, the strength to the field. Where do they align the shade? If they align the shade inside or the nose, where do they align him at? They align him inside, and then that's an under front to us. They're under to the field. All right, if they were, if they had the three technique here, then he's more than likely going to be inside leverage here. That would be an over front there, over that guard. So instead of going, hey, is it, they're in a shade, five, three, eight, we just say, hey, it's an under front to the field. And that tells all our coaches understand what it is. So, so now you've, you've heard all the techniques. Now we can use one word to break the verbiage down where the whole entire offensive line says, hey, they're under, under to the field. Now, if we were calling our strength to the tight end, let's say we were on the defensive side of the ball right now, and Coach Chavis said, hey, we're declaring anytime they attach the tight end, don't matter if he's to the field, to the boundary, we're going to declare our strength to the tight end. So we want to be in an over front to the strength. So that's why you would, so this could be called from a defensive standpoint, you could see them, they've set him here, there's your tight end, that would be considered an over front to the strength. I probably just confused every one of you, but, but, but you kind of see what we're going through there, okay? How we've got a, a, a if, if, if we're, if a linebacker, and I think, do we have the backer alignment, do you have it in here? No, sir. 10 and 30 of the backers? If a backer is aligned inside inside shoulder of that guard or outside shoulder of that guard, we can so, we call that. If he's here, it's a ten backer. He's in a ten backer technique. So you'll hear us talk to our linebackers. Hey, get in a ten look. Get in a ten look. That means get in that inside leverage of that of that guard. Hey, we need you in a thirty backer. Is he a thirty backer look? That means like a three technique. Get in that. 30 backer look. He's in a, he's in a 30 backer there. Okay. The wider they go, hey, he's in a 40 backer alignment. Anything on that, Will? Just adjust on that. The wider 50 backer. You usually don't see any wider than that. That's really wide there. It's really 30, 10. You'll see a 20 backer. A 20 backer is more of a head up, like a two technique. Uh, so that's again how we communicate with our, our linebackers and uh, the alignment we want them in. Um, Several different things as, as, you, as, you, as you look. Linebackers, as we teach, we teach our backers. Uh, there's different things we'll read. Some backers will read, will read linemen. Some backers read backs. Depends on the tendency of an offense that they, they've given you. You, know, you may be reading that, that near back to you. If it's a one back set, all reads go to the, to, the, to the running back. If it's two back set, I may be reading either the tight end or I may be reading the down lineman here. So it's important you're here, you're always calling out the strength. You'll hear our, our, our defense. As they come up, they're always looking for strength call. Right, 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 right. Left, left. Two backer, two backer, two backer. Two backer right, two backer right. You're hearing that communication being communicated because it's telling everybody we've called the strength. These guys don't know how many backers in. They don't know if there's a tight end in. They're having to hear where is the strength, and that accords to my to where I align. I align where my alignment is. Okay, so you'll hear our, our linebackers really communicating there as well. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> now, same thing. Field is to the right. We've now set our tight end to the right. Okay, now our strength is to the right. All right, so we, we would call this, this an over front. There it is, he's in an over technique. There you go. He's in. He's in a head up. Uh, he might be shading a little bit. Wide five. Three technique, and and I would call this a, a nine technique right here. Okay. So when you start looking at these backers, look how wide he is now. So communicating wise, he's in a forty or fifty backer look right here because he's a wide backer. You'll see a lot of these centers will come up and they're always ID in. They're going to try to find the mic. Where's the mic? You're pointing the mic. Why? Is because a lot of things that happen, everything is worked off the mic back. If they bring an extra hat down, let's say that they brought this four, this free safety, they brought him down. All right, we may be calling that the mic, but all of a sudden they bring the four back, the, the free safety down, and they bump the wheel backer in the box, and they push him. We may we may change the point. So you may hear the center go. You know, whatever that kid's name is, 32, 38, 38 is not the mic, 6 is the mic, 6 is the mic. I'm going to re-ID the mic, even though he's really a wheel backer. 
they're trying to they're trying to push the points before the zone combination or the power wrap or the counter uh, kick all that occurs and it's because of where it's all where the point backer is how many backers they got in the box and we're going to ID where the mic would be this is an over front I don't know how I got off on that but this is over front this will be considered a sound backer you'll see that in just a few minutes this to us is a tray formation tight ends attached I would be willing to bet we have two out here off the line and one on the line up there uh, they defensively have they were a, they were an over football team an over defense um, and we knew that you know a lot of times if we know what you are by our film study then we'll set our strength according to what we know you're going to set yours and try to work off of it's a chess match yes sir i mean and that's a good point because are you anticipating because at your rate you're wanting to yeah. get them out of misalignment so when do you make that determination on holding your ground and calling your play or just yeah. having your team set yeah. well go? a lot of it is you know how much movement do they do as a defense um, how much the, the, the scout reports that we have on these guys, hey, look, they're going to line up in this and they're going to stem to this. Um, so if we know that, we're going to set our strength because we know where you're going to be, and then we'll be able to work off of it. You'll see us set our strength and then switch our strength over. That mean, doesn't mean you have to keep your strength there. So if we know that you're going to set your strength according to us, then we may flip-flop a tight end. We'll call bounce. We'll bounce a tight end over or trade over. And uh, we trade them over or bounce them over. The bounce would take two over. <clears throat> it means if we had another tight end in here, we bounce, we would take two. If we trade, we take one. And we let you set your strength, and we're going to change the strength of this whole formation to the left. And now we're going to try to outflank it. It's all a numbers game. How, how, how much freedom do you give the quarterback in making that determination? No, well, not much. Not much. We, 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 we do that from the box. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of uh, we'll go fast. You know, tempo is is misconstrued, everything's tempo is fast, 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 fast. Tempo is really the ability to change the course to go really fast, go really slow, huddle up. So changing the course, if, I, if, I, if we just play one way the whole time for defensive coordinators, it's easy. But if we change the tempo of a game, um, so you'll see us cut line up and then we'll check the sidelines and court to see where you're at with it. Some of it is, is gimmick, some of it is, hey, we're truly trying to check where you're at and see if you're if, if you're you know, true to your tendencies. So that makes sense. All right, that's an over front. Let's go to the next one. Here's a bear look. Now you hear people talk about what is a bear front? You know, a bear is, is basically stems out of out of an odd look, and you're really taking five defenders, five D linemen, and covering up the five O linemen. That's that's kind of what it comes down to. You can get the bear many different ways. You can line up in an in in over front, stem it all, shift it all to bear. But a bear front is truly is you're a head up zero nose, and you're you're covering everybody up that's on the line. Okay, so five for five essentially is what you've got right there. Now what you've done because you've got only five offensive linemen, and you've got now five defensive linemen all covered up at this point. In any pass protection, your backer or your, I mean your running back is now considered what we call he's responsible for the roof. Anything above the bare front is called the roof. All right, and you'll see you'll see offensive linemen whether they're here, whether they're tapping their head, they're tapping their butt. They're signifying back to that quarterback and back to that lineman or that that running back that hey, we're in a we've got we've identified this as bare. All pass protections are off. You have the roof, or you have the extra hat that's coming in the box, whether it's a safety or whether it's a, 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 a backer that's walked out or it's a, um, some, any pressure off the edge, any nickel that comes in. It's yours because we can only block five. Okay, so that's considered a bear front right there. Um, we, obviously, we play a lot of bear. We'll get in and out of it. It's... It's, it, it's really difficult from an offensive coordinator standpoint uh, to, to scheme against and go against. Uh, it has its weaknesses because it's forcing you on the back end to play different, different coverage there. You're going to be a lot of man coverage. You know a lot of pressure is probably coming when you get bare front. Um, you're susceptible to speed option uh, in a bare front. It's all about answers. What's your answer when they go to bear? What are you doing? It's a chess match. Um, they'll line up in bear. I mean, they got to stay there because they can stem out of bear. They can stem right back to a four, uh, over or under front, 
or just a straight odd front, whatever their, their base defense is. So, okay? This is Oki. Oki is nothing more than, and it's, it's an odd front is what it is. It's, it, 